Shalom and welcome to The Bible Comes to Life. Join us as we explore the stories of the Bible and experience them where they actually happen in the land of Israel. I'm Omer Eshel, Director of the Israel Government Tourist Office, Midwest Region, and your host. Today, we will talk about what I consider to be one of the most beautiful places in the land of Israel, the Sea of Galilee. This is the place where Jesus encountered his first followers, his first disciples, and where he performed most of his miracles. And today, when you will visit, you can experience the Galilee as Jesus did 2,000 years ago. The Sea of Galilee, which is actually a freshwater lake, is known by a variety of names in the Bible. In the Old Testament, it is called the Sea of Kinneret. In Luke, it is called the Lake of Gennesaret, coming from the Greek version of the word Kinneret. It is the largest lake in Israel and one of the largest in the region but it is a Middle Eastern version of a lake, meaning that it is a pretty small lake, around five and a half miles wide and nine miles long. But in the Middle East, this is one of the largest lakes. It is situated on the north side of Israel, bordered on the east by the Golan Heights, on the north by the Jordan River, on the west by the Galilee Hills, and on the south by the Jordan Valley. We read about Jesus' first encounter with his disciples in Matthew 4. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon, called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Then he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. And he called them, and immediately they left the boats and their father and followed him. The Sea of Galilee in the first century AD was a very interesting place. It was in the middle of two worlds, the Jewish world on the west side and the pagan world on the east side of the lake. Being one of the largest lakes in the area, it was surrounded by fishing communities. And fishing was the main industry of the area. So we can understand why Jesus came here to find fishes of men. Let us turn to Mark 4.35. That day, when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side, leaving the crowd behind. They took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious storm came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him up and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. Now the same route across the lake described in Mark 4 is an active travel route between Genosar on the west side of the lake and Ma'agan on the east side. Up to this day, boats cross on this route from one side to the other following the fish. And every day in the afternoon, the east side of the lake becomes very stormy because of the winds. So today, when you sail on this east side of the Galilee, you will see the same storm as described in Mark. The story comes to life before your very eyes. And you can imagine the boat carrying Jesus and his disciples sailing along the same type of storm that you are witnessing. Today, at Genosar, you can visit an extraordinary finding. In 1996, the Israel Antiquities Authority found a fishing boat dating back to the time of Jesus. It was found intact in the water, which is itself is a miracle, since wood typically disintegrates very quickly in fresh water. 
today you can see that same boat that sailed on the lake during Jesus' life. And that maybe, just maybe, is the same boat that we read about in Mark. And finally, we read about Jesus preaching at the Galilee in Luke 5. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When you go today to Genosar and stand at the Sea of Galilee, you see the shape of the bay itself, how the area cannot accommodate a lot of people, and why Jesus had to go on Simon's boat and sail a little bit into the lake in order to talk to the masses. The word Genosar is actually built from two Aramaic words, Ganei and Sar, meaning the garden of the ministry. This refers to the very fertile land in the area, but is also an analogy for Jesus' ministry and the way he cultivated disciples from the most fruitful part of the land, the Galilee. So today, when you visit Genosar and you see the bay, imagine yourself standing there among thousands of followers and hearing Jesus preach the word from that small boat. Only in Israel, when the Bible comes to life.